An attorney calls it unjustified police brutality. An unarmed man shot and killed outside of his brother's middle school during the afternoon pickup. We just got the body camera video. We want to warn you, it may be tough to watch. Family of Richard Ward will officially file a lawsuit this morning for the shooting that happened a year ago tomorrow. Here's 9 News reporter Steve Steger. It feels like foreshadowing. Uh, I'm a little nervous because I don't like cops. Seconds after he says that, Richard Ward would be on the ground with three gunshot wounds to the chest. But let's back up and explain how we get there. 10-4, I'm in contact. How Richard ends up dead in the pickup line outside of a Pueblo middle school. His family says they were there to pick up his younger brother. When Richard got out of the car to smoke a cigarette and stretch his legs, investigators say when he went to return to his mother's car, he accidentally got into another car, realized his mistake, and walked back to his mother's car. Someone called the cops, and Pueblo deputy Charles McWhorter talks to Richard in the back seat. What's going on? Wow, call him the cops for me just looking for my little brother, huh? You can tell he's uncomfortable. Why are you touching my arm, bro? Like, uh, Why are you acting like this? I'm, uh, I'm a little nervous because I don't like cops. Why? Uh, they, I have a anxiety. They've, they've done things to me. What have they done to you? Uh, wait, I mean, stop resisting when you're not resisting. McWhorter wants to know why he got in that other car. I just want to hear your side of the story, man. Oh, so you're talking, dude, I straight up thought that that was my freaking, my car. That's all it was. Are you under the influence of anything? No. Okay. You have an ID with you? Do you have any weapons? Uh, this is where things escalate. Do you have any weapons? I don't think so. I had a pocket knife. You don't think so? Don't pull them out. Richard says he has anxiety. Ward's lawyer says he takes anxiety meds. What, what'd you just stick in your mouth? Pill. What's a pill? Let me go. Get up. Get up. Get up. About 20 seconds after McWhorter takes him to the ground. Stop. Stop. Stop, Stop resisting, bro. Stop. Three shots. The struggle stops, the deputies back away. An unarmed Richard Ward never gets back up. The deputy who shot him explains what happened as kids with backpacks walk by in the background. You all right? Yeah, are you? I put in my nose and then tried grabbing him my stuff. No one leaning in to check on him for another three minutes when firefighters get there. The DA in Pueblo County cleared the deputies involved in this shooting, justifying it as self-defense, as the deputies argued Ward was reaching for McWhorter's gun. They justified their pause to not help him and offer first aid because the family was in that car and they believed they may have posed a threat to the officers. Ward's family is filing a lawsuit relating to this case this morning. We expect to hear from them later on this morning at a news conference. It makes, I mean, everything escalated so quickly. It happened in a middle school. You could see, like, as you mentioned, the people, the kids walking behind in backpacks. It makes you wonder why didn't they tase him first or something? I mean, it just went real quick. You wonder, there's a bit of de-escalation at the beginning of the call. A little bit of talking, like, why are you nervous about us? That kind of thing. But it's that moment when he reaches into his pocket and throws something in his mouth, when things just get kind of surprisingly shocking and they pull him out of the car and they throw him on the ground. That's going to be the point I think that the attorneys make in this lawsuit is what justification did officers have to pull him out of the car even if he put something in his mouth. I think one thing that I found so jarring about this report is exactly what you pointed out with the kids and their backpacks walking by who were seeing all of this happening. Yeah, this was just after three o'clock in the afternoon. You imagine any middle school in town where kids are coming out with backpacks to meet their parents who are in that line of cars waiting. This is exactly where they were. They were waiting for his brother to get out of school. He got out of his car, just kind of stretched his legs, accidentally got in someone else's car. Uh, startled that person. Someone called 911 and this all started. Oh, tough video to watch. All right, Steve, thanks. Well, today, students from Denver's East High School will ask city leaders to address gun violence. Last week, two people shot 16-year-old Luis Garcia outside of East High School. That same day, there was another shooting off 18th and Lincoln near the Emily Griffith campus. So today, some of Garcia's soccer teammates and other students, as well as activist group Students Demand Action, all plan to testify at Denver City Council meeting. They say they'll call for accountability from Denver's leaders. There is new help for friends and families of people who tend to wander off. The Colorado Bureau of Investigation just launched a new website designed to prevent people from leaving in the first place and also to help them find their way if they do wander away. So this new website is designed to help people with Alzheimer's, dementia, autism, brain injuries or other developmental disorders. It has resources like tips for preventing wandering, what to do if and when a family member goes missing and information about tracking devices. CBI partnered with the Alzheimer's Association 
Nation of Colorado, as well as various law enforcement and emergency management agencies to design this website. There's checklists that if your loved one goes missing, here's what to expect when a dispatcher talks with you on the phone. Here's what to expect when a law enforcement officer comes to your house. So all these tips and information that will help really help families in the process of when their family member goes missing. Susan Medina from CBI says it's important to know that the people who wander website is not a substitute for calling 911 and it's always best to call 911 first when a family member goes missing. People in Syria and Turkey are now recovering from another major earthquake. Yesterday, the countries were hit with a 6.3 magnitude quake. So far, three people have sadly died and hundreds more are hurt. This is just two weeks after that major 7.8 magnitude earthquake that sadly killed more than 46,000 people. A restaurant owner in Colorado Springs says he lost 18 of his own family members in that earthquake. Erdal Bengaluri, who has owned the Turkish restaurant, the Purple Onion Grill for more than 30 years now, says it's always been a popular joint, but now even more so after the deadly earthquake. The support from the community helps as he and his family grapple with the loss of their loved ones. Unfortunately, it hit my mother's sides. There's a whole apartment complex went down and as, as, uh, they pulled, I believe it was 11 of them, the whole family, and bring back what happened. So right now it's just, uh, they're in a surviving mode. Erdal has been sending money to his surviving family members and is planning a fundraiser for Sunday, March 5th. They'll be serving food all day and night. 100% of the funds will go toward his family and relief efforts on the ground there in Turkey.